you guys, this is ridiculous. This is like the third time that I am recording this video. Ah. Okay, so I was tagged by Robin from Lampshade in the favorite movies tag. And since I have a hard time categorizing things that I enjoy and making lists of favorites, I decided to look at just one decade, the 80s, when I probably watched the m most movies, maybe, or maybe I watched more movies from the 80s over and over again. Let's get into it. I'll start with movies that the that I watched on TBS, but I later realized were not what I thought they were. First on my list, there was this movie, you might have heard of it, it featured a girl with her family. They went to a little resort for a summer vacation and she meets up with his dancing instructor and he teaches her how to move, if you know what I mean. I wiggle. Years later I realized that um, the one girl Penny wasn't just sick. Yeah, I had no idea. I was not watching a basically back alley abortion. Moving right along, I'm gonna take a dip into the John Hughes family, film family, because we all know if it's the 80s, you're gonna talk about some movies. Breakfast Club. I love that movie. It was a very long time before I realized why Anthony Michael Hall was sitting there with all of a sudden with black shades and a black hat and sounding like he was a jazz musician from the Big Easy. Marijuana. Next. St. Elmo's Fires. Why was Demi Moore's character sitting in an empty room where there was like wind blowing and these white sad curtains were flipping flopping about and she's just holding her knees just so damn sad. It took a long time for me to know that there was a lot of cocaine and boffing of her boss involved. But I loved it. Coming out of TBS ruined these movies for me and just into movies I like in general from the John Hughes. Uh, let's talk about Sixteen Candles, where a girl's family forgets about her 16th birthday, which I can relate to, actually, very well. But I love that movie, and mostly because of the heart, the kiss at the end over the birthday cake. Mm. Okay. And then another favorite was Pretty in Pink. Again with Molly Ringwald, but she, you know, she was she was really happening in the 80s. And uh, this one, I just have one word for you. Ducky. So then we go from there to a movie about a teen who is able to basically do anything he wants to. Who wouldn't want to be able to go eat at the fanciest of fancy restaurants without paying? Um, you get to dance and have a solo in a parade, drive around in a sweet vintage Corvette and basically be the boss of town. Um, young Tamara wanted to do that. How old Tamara wants to do that? That movie was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. All the thumbs up. The Goonies. It had romance. It had gadgets. There was adventure. And there was a treasure map. There was treasure. What more could a young Tamara ask? Well, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure with 
a young Keanu Reeves and that other guy where I learned how to say Socrates incorrectly. Thanks guys. Besides nerdy movies that I enjoy the most, Weird Science, where two best friends conjure up a highly sexual looking but they couldn't get any play from her if they wanted to. <laughs> And she somehow teaches them what true romance really is. And then the other movie, Real Genius, where a 15-year-old Mitch is enrolled into this school that's just for teenage geniuses. They discover that they're working on war weapons for, sounds like, there's gonna be a huge and they figure out a way to stop it all and the little man triumphs over the government and there's popcorn. Heathers where a young Winona Ryder whose name is Veronica in this movie is one of the four in like the popular clique but it's run by Heather and then Heather's two sidekicks, Heather and Heather. Veronica hates them and she wants to get rid of them. She dreams of killing them, murder, 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 murder. And Christian Slater, all the heart, he becomes Veronica's boyfriend and they end up Committing murder, 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 murder. Probably not the sweetest love story on this list, uh, but it does give a glimpse into a young Tamara starting to really enjoy like dark comedy. There, there was two movies that are super cheesy, even from the 80s, and I still loved them so much. The first one. Howard the Duck. You probably haven't heard of it before and I totally understand that. It was certainly not a good film and calling it a film is a very big compliment but I love that huge foul mouth little duck that I think was an alien. And Big Trouble in Little China, which as an adult watching it, I see that there are a lot of troubling stereotypes of Asians, but as a, a young Tamara from West Virginia, I did not pick up on that. I just knew that there were um, this one chick with green eyes that was kicking ass and taking names. There was a lot of flashing lights, a lot of people like floating in the air and fighting each other. And there's 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 a lot of troubles in Little China. And I think that's it for my 10 movies more or less. I didn't count them. Maybe you did. And if you like to do it, then consider yourself tagged. Thank you for so much for watching this. Stop by. I appreciate it. In the comments below were there any movies that uh, you think I should have watched in the 80s? Maybe I did. Let me know in the comments so we can have a chit chat. So, like this if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see more on the face. And I hope you're having a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, y'all.